Hello everyone, we are discussing about ventilator graphics and in today's class we will discuss about flow time curve. So in flow time curve, what are the things we can see in the ventilator graphic? So first we can see peak inspiratory flow rate and peak expiratory flow rate. Second we can see the inspiratory hold or we can see the adequacy of the inspiratory time. We can assess the adequacy of inspiratory time is adequate or not. We can see that it is flow cycle ventilation or time cycle ventilation. That also we can differentiate by the flow time curve. Next we can see the air trapping or auto peep. We can see the air leak also and we can see the what is the type of ventilation pressure control or volume control. So this is the pressure time, this flow time curve. So in x axis is time in seconds on y axis is the flow in liter per minute. So above the baseline, above the x-axis, positive side is the inspiration, inspiratory flow, negative side is the expiratory flow or expiration. So here inspiration is starting, flow is increasing, increasing, reaching to the peak flow, then decreasing, coming to the baseline and there will be one inspiratory hold will be there for the inspiratory time, then expiration will start in negative and then it will decrease coming to the baseline. This is the full flow time curve. So peak inspiratory flow here we can see this is the on y axis is the flow. So this is the peak inspiratory flow. This is the peak inspiratory flow rate. On negative side this one is the peak expiratory flow rate. Okay, peak inspiratory flow rate and peak expiratory flow rate we can see by this graphic. Next what is the inspiratory hold? So after coming to the baseline this will not go directly to the expression. There will be some inspiratory hold will be there. In this time there will be no airflow means during we have set inspiratory time but expiration has ended, inspiration has ended here but still expiration has not started. This is the inspiratory hold. If this period is low means inspiratory hold is low means I time is the excessive. You have set I time excessive we can decrease the I time. So by this we can assess the adequacy of the inspiratory time also, it is more or less. If it is inspiratory hold is more means I time is excessive, we can decrease. If there is no inspiratory hold and this expiratory flow is going without reaching the baseline, from here only it is going like this means I time is too less. I time is too less, it is not coming down to the baseline and before that only it is going to the expression means we can increase the inspiratory time. So we can assess the adequacy of inspiratory time also by this flow time curve. Next in flow time curve we can see that it is flow cycle ventilation or time cycle ventilation. Okay. So like SIMV assist control or time cycle ventilation pressure PSV mode is the flow cycle ventilation. So here in this graph we can see this. So in time cycle ventilation there will be inspiratory flow coming to the baseline, there will be inspiratory hold and then going to the expression. So in time cycle, this is the time cycle ventilation. In time cycle ventilation, this will return to the baseline and inspiratory hold will be there. But in flow cycle ventilation, this will not return to the baseline before that only it will go to the expression. What is the flow cycle ventilation? So when flow, flow will increase, flow will reach to the peak then flow is decreasing, decreasing and when flow is 15 to 20 percent of the peak flow, cycle will change to the expression. Okay. So this is the flow cycling means when flow is decreased to 15 to 20 percent of the peak flow, then will, it will return, it will convert to the expression. So if there will be no inspiratory hold. So this one is the time cycle ventilation, this one is the flow cycle ventilation. So we can differentiate by this graphic that ventilation is the time cycled or flow cycle ventilation. Next you can see here air trapping or auto peep also we can see here. So this is the inspiratory flow then expiratory flow. Expiratory flow should reach to the baseline but if there is air trapping or auto peep is generating that expiratory flow will not reach to the baseline. So here expiratory flow is not reaching to the baseline. So this this air trapping is there. This is the auto peep is generating here. This is the auto peep. Okay. So 
this is the auto PP is generating. This is not returning to the baseline. So in this graphic, we can see the air traffic. In actual ventilator graphic, like this will not return to the baseline. Before that, only this next cycle will start. Okay. So next cycle is starting before returning to the baseline. So in actual graphic, it will look like expression. Then it is not going to the baseline. Before that, next cycle is starting. So this one is auto peep. Next we can see air leak, peritubal leak or any air leak we also we can see in this graphic. So in air leak what will happen? This expiratory flow will go above the baseline also. In air trapping this was not reaching to the baseline but in air leak this will go to the above the baseline also. Uh, will go to above the baseline and then next cycle will start. So this is the air leak. Next in this graphic we can see the bronchospasm also. If bronchospasm is there or any increased expiratory resistance is there, that also we can see. So this is the normal flow time curve, inspiration, expression coming to the baseline. This is the peak inspiratory flow. In bronchospasm, what will happen? There is increased expiratory resistance. So during expression, peak flow will increase. Here in this normal graphic, this was the peak expiratory flow. This was the peak expiratory flow rate was good normal but in bronchospasm this peak expiratory flow rate will reduce so here this one is reduced up to here only so this is the peak expiratory flow rate in case of the bronchospasm next what will happen that expiratory time also will increase here after reaching the peak expiratory flow rate this will come to the baseline quickly but here this will take time to reach to the baseline means expiratory time will increase so here peak expiratory flow rate has reduced this time is increased this will take more time to exhale so peak expiratory flow rate will reduce expiratory time will increase in case of the bronchospasm or increase expiratory airway resistance next in this we can see the type of ventilation also it is pressure control ventilation or volume control ventilation that also we can see in the flow time curve so in Pressure control generally we use in neonates. So pressure control ventilation, the flow time curve will look like triangular shape. Slowly is increasing and slowly reducing. It will be like triangular shape. But in volume control, this is the volume control mode of ventilation. So volume control ventilation, this will look like square shape or rectangular shape. So here we are controlling the volume. Volume is reaching to the maximum. That will be maintained for the inspiratory time. That so that that flow time curve will look like square wave shape. So here, what is the variable? That variable that we are controlling, that will look like rectangular. In pressure control ventilation, we are controlling the pressure. So pressure curve will be rectangular. In volume control ventilation, we are controlling volume. So volume in this uh, that flow will look like rectangular. So flow time curve is very important because this tells us about so many things. So we should always keep the flow time curve on the ventilator screen.